What is up guys, Greedy Knight here with a math video. I was just messing with sets in the training room and found myself asking, what are Toad Versary's hit zones? A quick Google search will provide that answer in the form of a Reddit post, but it's more valuable to understand how the labbers of the community derive these numbers for any given monster. Let's get into it. Let's assume Toadversary has no known values and it's our job to find those values. In terms of hit zones, it has a head, neck, shell, body, two arms, and two legs. Also, we know the motion values of our attacks via the link spreadsheet down below. Lastly, we apply the different damage types for cutting, impact, pierce, the five elements, and four statuses. Blade Masters have cutting and impact damage, so I'll select a few from their roster. Pierce is exclusive to Gunner, so I will pick one of those. For status and element, I'll be using Charge Blade. To make calculations simple, we have to use the same moves on all of the hit zones. Lastly, I'll use no armor or charms, so the only damage the robot is receiving is from the weapon, demon pedalace, and demon items. I use each damage type to hit each part of the monster to get a number, then I just record those values in a spreadsheet. Charge Blade's morphing jump slash was used to find the cutting values. Axe Hopper provides enough height to reach Toad's neck. The weapon was the final form of the Kaiser Charge Blade with purple sharpness, 330 base attack, and no affinity. Purple Sharpness applies a 1.39 modifier for melee damage. The values are here as shown. Notice how Toadversary's arms and legs have the same damage. This might indicate that they have the same values. Hammer's Crater Impact was used to find the impact values, holding a motion value of 80 uncharged. The weapon was the final form of the Kaiser Hammer with 320 base attack, purple sharpness, and zero affinity. The impact damage is as follows. Since Crater Impact is a stronger attack than Morphing Jump Slash, the value should be higher. Pierce Ammo Level 1 has a motion value of 7. The weapon was the Antique Heavy Bowgun with the Power Barrel attachment, touting 393 attack. The highest value from a single bullet was recorded for these tests. It doesn't matter which value you pick as long as they are all consistent. The Pierce damage is as follows. Notice how Tetranodon's arms and legs have the same values, so it's safe to say that they do have the same hit zone values. While other weapons bleed other types of damage in their element attacks, Charge Blade is the only weapon in the game to apply purely element damage to a single attack while ignoring sharpness. For these tests, the meta element Charge Blades were used. The multiplier for an AED is 5. Unlike a motion value, a multiplier just multiplies your values. These are the values for element. Shield charge was not used for these attacks so that the equation remains simple. Gold Rathian, Volvodon, Somnicanth, and Teostra charge blades were used to find the thresholds for poison, paralysis, sleep, and blast respectively. The axe chops were used as a nice repeatable loop. Status has a 33% chance to build up on each hit regardless of motion value and damage. Meanwhile, stun only applies when you apply impact damage to the head. Just like before, I used the Kaiser Charge Blade for this test. To find the threshold for the statuses, you count up the number of status procs it took to inflict the status on Toad. For poison, it took 5 hits, paralysis took 10 hits, sleep took 8 hits, and blast took 4 hits. Stun took 4 hits after popping 4 element discharges. This gives us an estimated 200 damage for each non-stun status. Further testing determined that 200 was the threshold for each status. By boosting weapons to values of 25 and 50, they fell in line with sleep's hit count. Using some math, stun's effective value is 109.5. The resulting threshold for stun is estimated around 400. I repeated the test with Kaiser Hammer using just Water Strike on the head and found a similar result. The values are here as shown. Here are the equations needed to solve for hit zones. After plugging the values into these equations, these are the values for Toadversary's hit zones, rounding to the nearest whole number. Do note, although the listed element multiplier is 5 for an AED, it seems more accurate if the multiplier is 5.25 here. This yields the final spreadsheet. The hit zones are as follows. The head has 100, the neck has 80, the belly has 60, the limbs have 40, and the shell has 20 for all cutting, impact, and pierce damage. 
element has 30, 25, 20, 15, and 5 for the head, neck, body, limbs, and shell for each element. If we check with Reddit's numbers, these are close enough to be correct, but they aren't 100% accurate. I must be missing a multiplier or rounding differently than the game does. Now sadly, the Reddit post does not list the status values for Toadversary, so feel free to comment that down below if you manage to find it. The main takeaway from this exercise is to use the belly and limbs for testing since they are the most useful and most accurate to in-game monsters. The head, body, and limbs will simulate the elemental hit zones for element bane, element exploit, and elementally resistant monsters. Lastly, this process we used on Toadversary is used to find the hit zones for every monster. Like if this video was useful to you, consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Comment any topic you want me to cover and I'll do my best to cover it. That's all I got for this one. Greedy Knight, signing out.